Hey guys, off to Emrand. Wanted to show you this script I've been working on. It's called Helpful Citizen. And uh, it's uh, pretty easy to use and pretty configurable um, set of four basic NPCs um, that I call the giver, the teller, the healer, and the magician. And they all do different things and what's cool is it's all configurable so this really kind of demonstrates one of the, the more powerful uses of denizen and that is making uh, reusable NPCs and when I say reusable what I mean is that I see a lot of people make NPC scripts that are good for a single NPC whether it's because they're using the NPC directly or using locations directly. But this script is generic or reusable in the fact that it can be assigned to multiple NPCs um, without a problem. So let me kind of go over this real quick here. The way I've kind of set this up is um, the very first script container you're seeing here is something called the Helpful Citizen Configuration. And you'll see here it has some nodes. Um, and it says uh, copy this node and its contents to make a new configuration. Use the MPC constant configuration to select which node to use. Mind your spacing, of course. And so what's happening is um, in order to select which type of helpful citizen is, this, that is, which configuration to use, uh, default uh, giver, default teller, etc., you set it as an NPC constant with the NPC constants um, command. And so the format for that is slash NPC constant double hyphen set, then the name of the constant, which is configuration, and the value. And since it's two words here, we need to use some quotes. Default teller. And so that sets the configuration. And um, what a default, or I'm sorry, what a teller does is tell some advice and you can specify the advice by just putting it here in the nodes and this can be a secret password or some kind of you know helpful you know information that you know maybe an npc could know where an item is in a town and um it'll only spew this advice after you know a specified cooldown which i have all of these set real low to 10 seconds so i can kind of show you here but while that cooldown is active, it shows the cooldown text. So it shows different text while it's cooled down. And so just to kind of demonstrate, you'll see here I clicked on him and he says the secret word is please. And you'll notice that that's one of our advices here. And so what he's doing is he's selecting them randomly. And you'll see there, I'm all out of advice for now. So I've clicked him again within this cooldown. And so now he's telling me something from the cooldown text. And you'll see now if I click him too fast that he has this built-in um, kind of trigger um, called an unavailable trigger. And let's define down here in my interact script on unavailable. On every click, I engage the NPC for three seconds to avoid uh, players being able to kind of abuse the click. So that one's pretty basic. Let me show you the the giver. 
Just going to give him the assignment. Helpful citizen. Then we're going to set his uh, configuration to default giver. Okay. And you'll notice now what a giver does is give you an item and then he tells you something. So you'll see here that just like the teller, there's a list of options that he'll randomly choose from. Um, but you'll notice there's a slash here with some kind of phrase after it. The giver will parse that. And so the first part is the item that he gives. And the second part is what he says. So he just gave me a feather. Let me clear my inventory. Show you this again. So there he's, we've, we've hit the cooldown text and the unavailable text. There you go. I found this feather. Please have it. And he gave me a feather. And so this can be good for NPCs that give away an item every so often. Um, like I said, I have the cooldowns really low right now, 10 seconds. You could easily make that 23 hours just by putting 23H, and it would take you know a day before you could click them again and get another item. So if you have some items that you want to give away randomly, maybe some money or a diamond. Um, that's a good way to do it. <clears throat> and uh, it's fairly customizable, you know, given, you know, the simplicity of the script there. So now we have the teller. He loves to tell us that the secret word is please. And the giver. So the next type is the healer. And this one's kind of cool. Um, this this one definitely will come in handy if you know some Denison script because you can customize it to be um, you can customize it a little bit more than the other ones. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give him the helpful citizen assignment and give him a config default healer. Okay, and you'll notice that it tells me I am doing fine. And that's because I have not met this condition. So before the healer will heal, we have to meet this condition. And so this could be, you know, the player is part of a permissions group or you know, the player has a flag. Um, in the default healer here, it's checking the player's health is less than 10. So if the player has less than 10 health, um, then the healer will heal. If those don't match, he'll do this healthy text node here, in which case he tells me you're doing fine. And so let me just hurt myself here. So that uh, he'll heal me. Oops. You'll see that he tried to heal me, but he seems to be all out of mana. Try again. That's the cooldown text. And I keep uh, keep healing myself. There you go. Now I hit 20 HPs, which is the uh, the player health max here. So you'll see that you can use denizen tags in most of these. Um, you can assume that you have uh, player context and NPC, NPC context. So that's the healer. You can uh, adjust his cooldown text, his cooldown of course, his healthy text, his you know his heal options uh, chosen randomly and the condition. 
magician is um the next type here and it's kind of cool this one could definitely be uh utilized in some pretty cool ways let me go ahead and give him the helpful citizen and make him the default magician Okay, and if I give him a click, you'll notice that he made me invisible. And now I'm not. Shoots off fireworks. Of course, he tells you he's on cooldown. And he'll teleport you. So these are, of course, you know, completely configurable. Um, the magician has a few more nodes here. You'll notice that it has a node for each of the spells, and that is because it needs a little script to run for each of the spells. And so, a magician can have multiple spells, kind of in the same format we've been using. That is. The first here is the tele is the uh, spell, uh, the local node, and the second part is what he says when he does that. And so you'll notice I have kind of show invisible and teleportation, and I have a valid script uh, for each of those. And teleportation finds the service block of either these within 25 of the player and randomly selects one adds one so that he's standing on top of it uh, the invisible just casts invisibility on the player for a minute and the show uh, just makes a firework so that was the teleportation So yeah, check the script out. Um, you don't necessarily have to edit any of this down here after the uh, start handlers part. This is what makes everything work, but you're more than welcome to look through it and change it. Of course, that's always encouraged. But uh, if you do get the script, I definitely encourage you to make your own uh, you know, types here. It's really easy. Just copy and paste default teller just copy it after that I'll make it my teller let's say a couple different greetings here it can be as little or as many as you want And if you just save that and reload your scripts, you can change this configuration. You'll notice that he's now uh, saying the stuff that I added to the teller configuration. So yeah, it's basic, but I think, uh, I think a lot of people get a lot of use out of this. That's it for now.